Hello everyone, welcome to Alpha Wisdom. I'm Mr. Cassandra. We're talking about sexual development this week. How do we become the sexual beings we are? All right, researchers have been working on this. Researchers, this would be your psychologists, psychiatrists, therapists, and of course, palmist. All right, they have found after the research that there are three basic types of sexual fantasy. Three basic types. They are those who want to escape from boredom, those realizing an unfulfilled desire, and those that are going over the edge. But a little background information. Sexual expression is determined by several factors, including genetics, early childhood experiences, especially with mom and dad, and education. If you believe in reincarnation, you may believe that experiences and lifestyles from previous lives may well have an impact on our sexuality in this life. Whether we believe in reincarnation or not, each relationship mobilizes different aspects of our sexual heritage in us. This is why we need to consider sexual expression as part of our overall being rather than as a separate compartment in life. As for hand readers, we need to be as objective as possible when evaluating another person's history and we must be aware of our own fears, prejudices, and conditioning doing the reading. We must also be wary of making broad statements about another person's sexual style, especially if it involves behavior we don't understand or never have experiences. experienced. Okay, let's get into the three basic ones. All right. The most common of all of those would be that first one, escaping from boredom. Why do we escape? Because we're bored. There's a humdrum existence. Like, for example, an overworked housewife who dreams about being taken away by a handsome prince on a white horse entertains this kind of fantasy. And there are more examples you probably can think of some yourself. Let's go into the next one. Realizing unfulfilled desire. It's like you wake up. Okay. And a longing, or it could be a longing toward a specific person. For example, a man who has sexual fantasies about his wife's sister or friend, or a woman fantasizes about having an affair with her gardener. Two such examples. In many cases, such fantasies can help us understand and come to terms with a problem in life that can be resolved within the context of an existing relationship. Sometimes with the help of marriage counseling or short-term therapy, whether the type, this type of fantasy is shared, left alone, or acted upon depends on the particular situation. We take the last one now. Okay. Here we have going over the edge. Psychologists will call this deviant. It goes over the edge and may involve violence, humiliation, ex- exhibitionism, or suffering. Far more serious than mere escapism, these fantasies are often related to deep psychological traumas from childhood. Because of strong feelings of guilt or shame, they are often kept secret, a repression that may lead the fantasizer to eventually act them out in real life. A tremendous harm to himself, herself, and to others. Okay, now we go on to some basics. Let's take a look here. Square has to do with the hand shape and also the finger shape. Okay? So let's see if the fingers or the hands are square, which is giving the broad heading square. If your lover has square hands, don't expect any surprises. They prefer conventional relationships. They tend to go with the flow. Nothing terribly fantastic about it. That's how they are. All right, let's take a look at the next one, conic. This term was used quite frequently uh, years ago. It's still there. 
may be phased out a little bit. We tell that not so much by the hand, but the fingers, they're slender and they become more pointed toward under the nail part, okay? This belongs to someone who is impulsive and sensitive. They are quick to fall in love and out of love. Also, another one which falls into a very, very similar because the hands are similar. We're looking at the back of the hand here. We're looking at the back of the hand here, okay? Here we have true romantics have pointed fingers, or they could be called conic but are often victims of their overactive imagination. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Those with, all right, spatulas. It's like the line goes, the length of the, falls in a straight line, and then the line curves in to make a curve. We call that spatulates. See the difference with the rounded? So, Spatulate, spatulate rather, hands for of people who fall in love truly, madly, deeply. But if this is not reciprocated, they give up quickly. They don't love you anymore. Usually these are the man's hands. We find more men with this rather than females. Okay. Well, I hope you find this interesting. We're deviating a little bit, but it's an important subject and it's a part of palmistry. Give a thumbs up if you liked it. By all means, share and subscribe. Welcome to the new subscriber. Very happy to have you. Well, have a great day. Love yourself. Love and light. Bye.